Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have our friend here joining us again, Margie Bartley here, and she is a national board certified health and wellness coach, uh, certified as a personal trainer, uh, also a corrective exercise specialist, food psychology coach, uh, certified uh, group fitness instructor, behavior chain specialist, and owner of her own company. My goodness, I'm out of breath, but this woman definitely wears many hats, uh, owner of Almonds and Oranges Health and Wellness. Wow. Welcome back today. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back and talk with you. And it's great to see you here. For those of you just on the podcast side, I'm also on the Zoomcast side and vice versa. So it's exciting. I get to see you face to face. Would you mind introducing yourself to our listeners to start? Not a problem. My name is Margie Bartley. I've been in health and fitness for about 35 years. Got my first certification 35 years ago and have forged ahead in health and wellness ever since then. Uh, Where are you from? I'm originally from Great Falls, Montana, where I was born and raised, grew up there, graduated from the University of Montana in Missoula, Montana. After I left college, I moved out to Boston for a short while, then I moved out to San Francisco for a little bit longer while, and then landed in the Indianapolis area for a number of years, and that's where I am. Beautiful, but you're helping clients all over the world with what you do. Let's talk specifically, what as a holistic health coach do you work with, uh, with individuals, groups? Give us some examples of the work you're doing. Absolutely. I work, um, I love to work one-on-one with individuals looking to improve their health and wellness. Um, and because I do wear many hats, as you pointed out, there is kind of an, a, an umbrella there that you stay within the scope with whatever you're doing with individuals. Um, I do tend to work a lot with, in personal training, I do more of the 50 and older crowd um, because I'm a corrective exercise specialist. And as we probably all know, as we get older, we tend to have more joint issues and the results of injuries and aging, such as osteoarthritis, that sort of thing. So I do a lot of um, corrective exercise. And then under the health and wellness um, umbrella, uh, I uh, did corporate wellness for a number of years, and I've worked with really individuals in um, a wide range of ages and concerns. Um, what I do I did find as um, a wellness coach over the last 10 years is that um, there's not really a specific demographic for the need for health, to be honest. So yes, we think in terms of as we get older, maybe we have more health challenges, but um, there's a commonality and universality to what goes on with individuals needing to improve their health. And so I think that it's really important not to um, limit our thinking to thinking certain demographics need more help than others, or limit our thinking into um, what issues different demographics might experience more. Wow. Interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that. And by the way, I just got to point out the website. I forgot to do that off the top. Did, Did we tell me how we can reach out to you before we continue? I am part of a coaching platform through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. It's called InWell, and that's with two I's, so I-I-N-W-E-L-L dot com. My profile and um, uh, all of my information, what some of the services I offer, all of that is on that website, so you can reach out there. You can also reach out through Instagram um, and contact me via my um, Oranges and Almonds Health Instagram account. You can always um, DM me there. And the link is also in that account to in well. So you can always um, pull up the link at that from that account and, and access me that way. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much. Uh, what else did you want to share for everyone today here that's tuning in, Margie? Uh, you know, I, I think it's important to know that it's never too late to work on your health. And I think the large component of what keeps individuals back from addressing their health can be a a bit of fear. Uh, People can really be a little bit afraid to either reach out or to address their their health needs. Sometimes that is a very scary proposition because you might find out information you didn't want to know, which is why we sometimes postpone those annual visits to the doctor and that sort of thing. So um, I also am an instructor for the diabetes prevention program as a lifestyle coach that is through the CDC that And I have found that there are a number of people there who um, really struggled with coming to terms that they were um, um, at risk for diabetes and needed to do something to prevent that. But once you can get a hold of that, it 
the rest actually comes a little bit easier, but I think the initial approach to health can be very scary, especially if you've tried things in the past and not been successful for the long term. So I really encourage people to know that it's really important and, and not all that hard to reach out and get some support and some help to move forward. It's a lot less scary when you have someone else working with you. Interesting. All right. And let me ask you, I mean, you've been, uh, you, I, we went through your backstory last time in detail, but it is our first Zoom, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Could you share a little bit about what brought you here and, you know, all those years of you, gosh, I can't believe all those years, but as the trainer, as how you got into health and wellness in, in general? Yeah, I, um, I was somebody who always really enjoyed fitness and I loved working out and I loved um, going to the gym and taking uh, group fitness classes. And it was at a YMCA in California that the um, instructor approached me and said, hey, we're really in need and looking for new instructors. You're really consistent. You come all the time. Would you consider getting trained and certified and then teaching classes for us? And that was something that I had never considered Um before I didn't you know, know that that was such a possibility, but I took her up on that offer, went to a training, got certified, loved it, and just have not looked back. And sometimes I, what I find too, is if you keep forging ahead with what you um, love and what, what works for you, doors start to open a little bit. And that's really what I found with health and wellness. My background had been education. I was in um, education, classroom teaching and childcare. Mm -hmm. It's just opened another door for me. Interesting. And here you are now helping so many. And I mean, I know it's not a one size fits all type thing. You mm -hmm. offer individualized, unique. And so I'm assuming it starts with an assessment process, right? You offer an initial consultation. I do. And I will, uh, I will meet with individuals initially for free as well, just to do initial consultation because we, they also need to find out if they're a good fit for me and vice versa. And then it's really important to also do a health intake. I do that as a personal trainer. I do that if I'm even just doing corrective exercise, whatever kind of professional role you're taking on when you're working with somebody in regards to their health, you really need to do a health intake and a health assessment. Um, there are many things that can impact what you are doing that individuals don't always know or consider. For example, when I've been personally training somebody and I do a health intake and find out they might be on a medication for hypertension, that does impact the direction we can go with fitness um, and exercise. And sometimes individuals are really surprised to know that that should or could be a factor in exercise. So it's also really important um, piece to educate them on that before we move forward and make sure that they're clear for exercise and clear to work with somebody. So you never want to um, exacerbate an underlying condition. There, there has to be a very um, strong code of ethics with that when you work with people. Interesting. All right. Thank you for that. And you offer a free initial consult, correct? Mm -hmm. If someone's interested in correct. reaching out, you do Absolutely. your assessment. And then clearly from there is how you would target uh, the next, but do you offer like a three month, a six month program? I mean, I know it's not one size fits all, but mm -hmm. what do people normally need in the health and wellness field with your services? How long? Well, that that's excellent. Um, I, I do offer both three and six months. And I think for people who are a little apprehensive and not sure about the process at all, or have um, additional concerns about working with someone, um, three months is a great way to get started. And then if we um, are doing great, for, for most people, I do recommend a six month program. Part of that is um, evidence-based. It's based on research on how long it takes to create and form new habits and how long it takes then once you start to build a habit, how long it takes to really make that habit um, a normal part of your life. And that's also something why sometimes people drop out. That's why when you start a New Year's resolution in January, a lot of people are not doing that anymore by yeah. January. They haven't given themselves enough time to build a habit. It takes a minimum of 12 weeks to begin to build the habit. Okay. Okay. And another 12 weeks to kind of start cementing that habit. So I think that's really important for individuals to know. Also, because you need to cut yourself some slack. It's not you that can't do it. It's um, that we need to have patience with the process, I think, is a really key component. Awesome. All right, Margie, what else did you want to share? Uh, I, I just want to encourage people to, to know, um, I learned from a behavior co behavioral health coach a few years ago that when individuals receive a new diagnosis, for example, you know, they find out that their blood sugars are high and they're um, at risk for developing um, type 2 diabetes, 
that there can there needs to be um, time to grieve that. And I think that that's important to understand as well, because it can be a very scary proposition to learn that you are at risk for something that seems on the surface kind of um, a very scary disease. Like, I don't want diabetes. I don't want to you know rely on medication. Um, so sometimes when we're very, very scared, we avoid, we tr and that is also research-based. Um, people tend to avoid confrontation or um, avoid um, situations when they're, um, there's a high risk for fear with that. Now, low to moderate risk people of fear, people will uh, maybe move forward and not be um, trying to avoid the situation. But if you're very, very, very afraid of the situation, then you will tend to avoid it. And the, part of that is because we don't give ourselves time to grasp the situation, process it, and understand that there are steps we can take to kind of take the fear out of that. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Thank you. And, you know, to work with someone like yourself, um, it does take accountability. And how do you check in? How do you, how, what's the process back and forth? How do you do that? Well, when we, when I do a program, either three or six month program, uh, I like initially to begin with uh, a weekly me me meeting or every two weeks, um, one month when we, um, or, you know, a month apart, when you initially start a program can be a little too much distance, um, to feel like you're on track and being supported. So it's up to the individual. Should we meet weekly? Should we meet every two weeks for those first three months? And I offer check-ins, uh, their choice. We can either text, we can email uh, between our uh, formal scheduled sessions just to make, because people need to feel supported. And if you're having a bad week and you feel like you're off track and not able to stick with what your plan was, then somebody reaching out and saying, how are you doing and how can I support you can make a difference for you to be able to stay on track with that and move forward. So I really do encourage individuals to consider doing either a weekly meeting, weekly check-in, or an every other week as we get started so that they don't feel alone in the process. And if you start to drift off track, you've encountered barriers, you're not sure how to overcome the barrier. If you have somebody reaching out to help you um, develop a strategy to overcome that barrier and stay on track. Got it. And, you know, I know, I think you said last week, it's not a diet. It's eating healthy. You should not eat healthy all the time. What was the terminology you used? I forget. Cause we don't want to use the diet word. Cause those right. don't work. It's not a diet. Eating pattern. Eating yeah. Pattern. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A healthy eating pattern is significant, of course, but this is where uh, patience also comes into it because um, so many diets out there, people think the diet's going to be an answer. And then when they don't do well on a diet, uh, they feel like they failed. And it's not you failing, it's the diet failing. The diet's not right for you. You know, some people can metabolize a lot of protein. So a protein rich diet might not affect them so much. But I, I have known individuals who tried high protein diets and ended up with kidney issues because their bodies just could not process the amount of um, protein they were taking in. So it's not a one diet um, fits all either. You need to establish a way to understand how to eat because no diet either is designed to last forever, to be long-term. Yeah. They are the answer in the short term. So you have to consider what's your answer in the um, long term. If you do do a diet, what, what are you going to do when you can't do the diet anymore? Yeah, true. Yeah. All right. What else, Margie, for us to get us inspired, to feel better, to look better? Tell us why we should be doing this and taking control of our lives. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it comes down to your um, desire for how you want to live life. It really needs to, to fit into your lifestyle as well. I think that's also a mistake that individuals make is they, they hear the latest fitness trends or the latest nutrition trends, and they try and bend their life to... Mm -hmm accommodate those things. And that's another reason why these things don't work. You can't, you can't do a high intensity workout five days a week, you burn out and your bodies are not supposed to be doing high intensity mm -hmm. five days a week. And then you also end up injured. And it's important to um, understand that you need to make those things fit into your lifestyle. You, you have to bend the nutrition, bend the um, exercise program to fit into your life. Also, I think um, too often we shortchange the importance of the mindful um, approach, the mindset, as well as being mindfulness and understanding um, the mental well-being portion of that. I think you and I had also talked um, either last time or uh, I think it was last time um, about uh, the pandemic 
and how some of that really affected individuals. And I think, of course, going into the pandemic, who knew what was that was going to be like? Um, and then as we got into that pandemic, um, we were as a group, as a whole, I mean, I, I don't think I talked to anybody or didn't know anybody who wasn't feeling some kind of emotional stress from the pandemic itself. But we didn't have enough tools in place to cope with that. So I think there was a real struggle and we've seen the fallout from some of those struggles with the mental health um, crisis and situation. Now that we're coming out of that pandemic, it's you know um, supposed to be officially ending and it's been a real struggle. And yet I think people are still resistant to address their mental and emotional well-being. And uh, if you can't address that, then there's so many other portions of your your health that are not going to um, fall in line with where you want them to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. Well, let's remind everyone, Margie, how we can reach out to you directly. Um, you can contact me at Almonds and Oranges Health on Instagram, or you can go to iinwell.com um, in well, and I'm on the health coaching platform there. Awesome. Well, I try to go on in well, just to let you know, and I have a trouble. You have to create account in order to see it. Just, is that correct? You have to sign you up. You might have to, you might have to sign yes. in an account. Okay, yeah. perfect. Just want to let everyone know that. Cause I got that same URL, uh, code last week and yeah, you have oh, to okay. make an account to sign up for it just to let you know, tell us then your social media page as well. I know you're on Instagram, right? Yeah, primarily I'm just doing Instagram. I've not been doing uh, Facebook. If that's an issue for people, I can always uh, start that. But I have found more traffic to be on the Instagram page, which is Almonds and Oranges Health. And you can also just uh, put my name in the search in on Instagram and it should also pull that up. Okay, awesome. And, you know, we still have 10 minutes left in the show. What else did you want to inspire our viewers and listeners with today? I, I, I feel like people should also not short, short change um, the effect of doing something with a partner. And it doesn't have to be a significant other kind of partner, whether that's a spouse or a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever um, significant other you have. It can just be a best friend or a coworker, um, a sibling, whoever is important in your life that also wants to just improve their well-being. Um, there's power in numbers, and I love to do group workshops and group education for that reason. I think it also helps uh, people to gain perspective when they hear other people's stories. And by gaining perspective, what I mean, too, is just we, we get hard on ourselves. And then when we hear somebody say, oh, but look at it this way, they help us to reframe some of our own challenges and we can start to get light bulb moments. We're like, oh, OK, yeah, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can because we are our own worst critics. Yeah. And really encourage people to find a support person and see, and, and more than one support person. So if you want to do it with um, a group of friends, I think it's an awesome way also to approach that. And I will, I can tailor programs to group dynamics, whether that's a family or whether that's a group of friends. I have done um, groups of women friends before and worked with them. And we always have a really good time because they are so supportive of each other and always willing to be each other's cheerleaders, even when they are um, our own worst critics when we do that. Yeah, we so are. Now, could you share some experiences and stories and maybe some clients, you know, what's been going on in the world of uh, health and uh, your coaching and you know, how you're inspiring them and how they're doing that we can maybe empathize with? Sure, sure. Um, I worked with a family, oh, years ago that was um, parents and two children. And I think it's also important to know when we are doing things as a family, approach with our children is so critical because when we also come off um, talking about health, number one is though it's punishing, right? I have to follow this diet or I can't eat that or I have no willpower. Our kids are watching and they're mm -hmm. hearing and listening to those stories. And children are not responsible for their food supply. They don't have jobs. They're not making the grocery list. They're not doing the cooking. And so if we have children that are not healthy, and I don't mean just overweight, but even children who don't appear to be overweight are not always really healthy. They don't have the healthiest diet. So let's also kind of clear up that misconception that we're only unhealthy if we're overweight, which is, is not true. Um, but sometimes um, I've seen some parents come through and want to have their kids be healthier without working on their own health themselves. 
So we have to also keep in mind that we have to be the role model. I mean, you cannot expect a child to be responsible for, for things like that. And you don't want to feed them the negative body image and the negative impact. And also, even when we just choose for ourselves, oh, I'm just going to diet, our children see that too. And then they grow up with the concept of the only way to be healthy is to restrict and be go on diets. And then we pass down this cycle of nobody knows how to have a healthy relationship with food and how to eat in a way with a healthy eating pattern that manages their lifestyle without being restrictive or without um, feeling like it's a constant battle of wills. So I think it's really important for families to know that. Um, even if parents want to start themselves addressing health and then by guidance and example, start to help their children with that. So I, I, I think that can be a misconception. Yeah. And I've also um, worked with some best friends that who who is better to support you than your bestie, you know, um, especially when best friends have similar goals. And, you know, you can have a best friend doesn't have a similar goal, but um, I've had some best friends that just were the most awesome to work with because of the way they could support each other. And they always showed up because they knew the other person was relying on them to be there. And that is a key component with accountability. You got to show up in order to uh, be successful. And that's it, the accountability factor. I apologize, I'm having a coughing fit. Hold on. So continue. I'm sorry. Uh, so I think it's really important to consider doing it with a friend. Sometimes um, we won't always think outside that box. No, yeah. it's true. It's true. And partners, and you do the group coaching as well. So um you know, in your line of work, uh, are you still also now um, uh, personal training people as well? Yeah. So yeah. part of your program, did they also use that aspect of you too? Because you're really like a one-stop shop. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. You're doing you doing it for so long. Doing your call and then you go meet them at the gym or uh, do you do, ver as a personal trainer these days, but you know what? I don't even know. I haven't been in the gym in like 10 years. Are people personal training from like Zoom? Like, are you talking to people at the gym or are, are you, is it? back to being in person hands on. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's a good question. We are back to being in person in the gym. Even a year ago, we were we were getting back in there, but we were all wearing masks still, and we weren't as many people in the gym. Uh, this year, you know, we've been unmasking, and there are a lot more people in the gym. And since January, the gym where I work um, has seen the numbers increasing every month. So people are are really wanting to come back out into public and get engaged again with group fitness classes with personal trainers or just to be out and about in the gym. Um, I have a couple of clients who are um, actually above the age of 70. And I think that's another really important uh, misconception we have is we tend to think as we get older, we uh, we slow down pretty soon. We're just doing fitness in a chair. And yet I've had a couple of clients in their 70s who have made gains. And so I think that's important to emphasize in that uh, you can make fitness and wellness and health um, gains at any age in every age. And that's also evidence-based supported. And I have one client in particular, 74 year old woman who uh, has gone from, uh, she had she had knee replacements. So when she started with me, we were just trying to get her moving and a little less pain. So we started with some corrective exercise. Now, a um, little over a year later, um, she has done a couple of fun runs. She did one fun run last year. And then in the last, that was last spring. And then in the fall, she did a, another fun run and increased her finishing time by six minutes. She was six minutes faster in that time. And she, again, she went from kind of struggling with some painful knees, not being able to get up and down on the floor to now she can do a burpee. She has started working with kettlebells. Um, she's trimmed down and lost some weight. And she feels fantastic. She feels she's very um, invigorated by all of her gains. And just uh, a couple of weekends ago, did another fun run. Wow. Yeah. wow. Well, Margie, we have uh, two minutes exactly left on the show. What else would you want to share with us before we do have to part ways today? Anything we should know? Why should we reach out to you? Come on. What makes you so unique? I know. <laughs> I like you as a person, let alone the credentials and the great testimonials. But what else is it about you and your work that you want everyone to take away with today? I think it's great to know that um, health coaches are there not to tell you what to do, but to help you find what you need to do or want to do for yourself. And that's a key component of that. Um, I, I do feel like I offer a lot because I do have some one-stop shopping. 
Um, I do have such um, various backgrounds. I also have a certified personal fitness chef um, uh, certifications, and I love to teach people how to cook healthy and how to shop healthy. So uh, I, I really encourage people, if you're afraid of some part of your health, if you've had some bad news regarding your health, please know that there isn't any problem that can't be addressed that we can improve and really sit down and think about what kind of lifestyle you want to have for yourself. And then think about reaching out to have, find somebody who can help you um, lay out the path to achieve that. Aww. Well, thank you. And you could be that person. And how do we reach you again? You can contact me at almonds and oranges health on Instagram. Um, you can even even just DM me if you don't want to go to inwell.com and set up an account. It doesn't cost anything, but you would have to, you do enter in your, your email and set up an account. Um, just direct message me through Instagram. That's fine as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll do. And you have a fantastic day. And I'm glad you got the memo. We wear black today. It's Friday. I don't know. I just felt like saying that. But thank you so much. You have a fantastic day. And to all of our thank listeners you. and viewers, thank you. Stay tuned. Margie Bartley again back with us and looking forward to the next time we connect. Have a great day. Thank you. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.